Oh man, class was so tough today. I have a final exam tomorrow. I guess that means it's time to watch Strike 2 again! Alright, let's get this started. Huh? There's like a note. Before you watch Shrek 2 again, pay the electric bill. Me from the past. Alright, let's go check it out. Alright, so here are my bills. Rent, no. Student loans, no. Even more student loans? Are you kidding me? Ah, here we go, the electric bill. Let's see how much this costs. What? Over 9,000? There's no way that could be right. If only we could produce energy easier so that would be cheaper for everyone. Yeah, who are you? I will summon my Google to help you answer your question. Oh, um, okay? My name is Alexa. Um, isn't Alexa, like, a girl's name? What did you just say? I said, isn't Alexa, like, a girl's- oh. What did you just say? What? What did you just say? Uh, uh, Alexa is very masculine sounding. Oh. That's better. Now, where were we? Uh, I think, I think we're talking about, like, energy or something. Ah, uh, that's right, energy. Go ahead and name the examples that you know of. Okay, um, let's see, uh, oh, uh, fossil fuels. Fossil fuels? The classic enemy. This stuff is non-renewable and it causes climate change. Think again. Huh, okay, uh, how about, ooh, solar power. The power of the sun. Closer, it's renewable, but it also isn't entirely consistent full of energy. It doesn't work at night or in, or on a cloudy day. So, there's that. And it takes a lot of land. Hmm, okay, how about wind power? Wind power is basically a worse version of solar energy. It's renewable, but it's based on inconsistent weather and it kills birds. Hmm, uh, hydropower. So hydropower is a good renewable resource, but it can only be built in water and it doesn't work in drought infested areas. California. It also destroys fish. Wave power. So wave power is a lot like hydropower, except it could only be built in the ocean. So that's a severe limitation. It's also not very high in development. Ooh, what about nuclear fission? Nuclear fission. Now this bad boy is not renewable. It's based on uranium deposits, expected to run out in like 80 years. That's, that's kind of nuts. It also creates radioactive waste. Hmm, I can't, I can't think of any other energy source. Now what you didn't mention is nuclear fusion. Oh, like Dragon Ball. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, anyway, so nuclear fusion. The holy grail of all energy sources. This stuff powers our sun. It's totally renewable. We have practically infinite resources to do it. And also, there's no toxic byproducts. What? That sounds too good to be true. How does it work? I have this imaginary example. Okay, check it out. So you have particle A and particle B. They both weigh one gram each. And so when they fuse into particle C, you think it'd be two grams, but it's actually 1.5 grams. And you're still probably wondering, where's the missing 0.5 grams? And that, my friend, is being converted into energy by the famous equation E equals MC squared, which basically says that for a little bit of mass, you get a lot of energy. Oh, okay, that, that makes a little sense. Now the actual fusion that we'd be doing in real life is known as the proton-proton chain. Now this is an incredibly oversimplified version, but basically you get a bunch of hydrogen and you go all the way to helium and, and the things that each step in the process releases a ton of energy. And the byproduct of the proton-proton chain is helium and helium does not hurt our environment. In fact, we actually have a shortage of that right now because that's what we use it in balloons, we're running out of it. So this would act, this wouldn't hurt our environment and we could actually use it. Oh, and it's green too, so it's, it's a lot better than the other types of energy. Except, where can we get the fuel, you know, hydrogen and helium? Hydrogen, does that sound familiar? It's because it's the same H in H2O. And two-thirds of Earth is covered in water. Like, 
We have tons of it. Okay, and then you also have helium-3, which is another part of the proton chain. Basically, helium-3, we don't have a lot of it on Earth, but let's say we advance our space travel thanks to Elon Musk and SpaceX. So let's say we, let's say we go to the moon and we harvest helium-3 because the moon is full of it. So we bring it back to Earth and create energy. It's just like Minecraft. Oh, awesome. So what's stopping us? So the thing about nuclear fusion is that in order to actually push the atoms together, we have to create the same conditions as the core of the sun here on Earth. And that's nearly impossible. Shoot, does that mean it's impossible to do? Note that I said nearly impossible and not totally impossible because Minecraft doesn't have fusion in the game yet. But on Earth, it's not totally impossible because we have devices such as the Stellarator or the Tokamak where basically it's one giant magnet donut where you have plasma running through its outer shell and it'll create these large magnetic fields that will compress an area to the middle which will create the same, the same conditions as the core of the sun. Oh nice, so how long is it going to take to have fusion on a large scale? So because we don't actually fully understand how fusion works, like the model I just explained, it doesn't actually create energy, it takes more energy to power it than it creates. So we're still trying to figure that out and with that being said, with current government funding, it's going to take around 20 to 30 years to, to reach our goal. Now that might seem like a long time, but we also have private businesses on the rise who are trying to reach that goal even sooner. One, one example would be a company called General Fusion where they're trying to reach the same goal and it's funded by none other than Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world and my creator. Oh, Alex from Amazon. Wait, didn't Google summon you? So that's actually besides the point. The point, the whole, this whole point is that there are over 1.2 billion people on Earth who don't have access to cheap electricity. Now nuclear fusion with its high energy output and the fact that it doesn't pollute our environment plus the added bonus that we have practically infinite fuel for it would help solve this problem. And I guess with that being said, adios muchacho. He's gone! Guess it's time to watch Shrek?